I want to talk a little bit today about the challenges that people are facing with mental health. These are unprecedented times. People's lives have been turned upside down. If you're a frontline worker, you're working hard, you're stressed, your family is stressed, you're under intense pressure. People have lost their jobs, businesses have been shuttered. Seniors are safe at home, but they've lost their connection to the outside world in many cases. And those who do live alone or live in remote communities are feeling more isolated than ever before. And whether you're feeling stuck at home or separated from other people, this pandemic has been difficult for all of us. Everyone is experiencing stress, anxiety, depression, and disconnection from what the world was supposed to be. And so as we look at the many, many challenges, we've talked about programs for uh, financial assistance, we've talked about programs to ensure that people are staying in place, to ensure that our borders are safe, to ensure we're doing everything we can to help people financially. We also need to step up and make sure that the COVID-19 pandemic is not going to adversely affect our mental wellness, whether it be through anxiety, depression, or other stresses, stresses in what are now becoming our daily lives. And of course, growing up, young people particularly are hard hit by this. We all remember being young, whether we were in high school or, or college or, or even in, in our early adulthood, connecting with other people is part and parcel of what we do. We are social beings. This has been extremely challenging. And so what uh, I've asked Minister Judy Darcy to do is to look at the, the uh, range of programs that are available to people today and how can we supplement those by making sure that we can go virtual on some of these initiatives so that we can't necessarily go and visit people face to face, we can't meet people in large groups, but we can certainly meet with people through technologies that have been proven very, very effective, not just for frontline workers, not just for continuing our interactions in the work world, but also with school, also with social connections. So I'm very pleased to announce today that we put another $5 million toward uh, virtual mental health services. Uh, Judy will go into the details on those, but these are critically important times for all of us. And we need to hang together. And we need to recognize that although we may feel stress, we may feel uh, bouts of depression at the challenges that we face as individuals, as a family, and as a community, together we can get through this. And the acknowledgement that mental health is something that we need to address has never been more present as it has been over the past number of years. When we appointed uh, Judy Darcy the first Minister of Mental Health in Canada, it was with a view to protect people who were feeling vulnerable. At this difficult time, uh, Judy's work and the work of health care providers, particularly mental health workers, social workers, has never been so important. So with that, I'll ask Judy to go into the programs that we're going to be announcing today. Thank you, Premier. Now over to you, Minister Darcy. Uh, thank you so much, Premier. Uh, I'd like to begin by acknowledging that we're on the traditional territory of the Musqueam, Tsleil-Waututh and Squamish nations, the Coast Salish peoples. Good morning, everyone. Um, and let me begin by acknowledging, as the Premier did, the incredible stress and anxiety that I know that so many people across British Columbia are dealing with at these really unprecedented times. The isolation, the loneliness, the financial stress of losing a job or losing a business, homeschooling with your kids, the fear of becoming sick with COVID-19. These are taking a tremendous toll on all of us. And we're seeing increased anxiety, increased depression, grief, loss, loneliness, and overall stress for people from all walks of life in all corners of the province. And many of the traditional ways that we're so used to living, many of the things that bring us joy have been put on hold. Whether that's celebrating birthdays or anniversaries with people we love, whether it's getting married, whether it's playing team sports or doing group exercise classes, going out to a restaurant or visiting with family and friends. And some of the most difficult things that any of us ever have to do in our lives have become heartbreakingly impossible. Like not being able to comfort someone who's seriously ill and not being able to hold the hand of someone who's dying. And while we know that these physically distancing measures are temporary and are in everyone's interest, it's important to recognize both the immediate and the long-term impacts that this pandemic can have on people's mental health and well-being. Uh, 
Frontline service providers and community agencies are giving everything they possibly can. They're pouring their hearts and their souls into meeting the growing and the changing mental health needs in our communities, but they cannot keep pace with the increasing demands for help, and that's why we're here today. We know that staying connected while staying apart is more important now than ever before. So we're working with our Indigenous partners and with the Canadian Mental Health Association, BC, with Foundry Youth Centres and others to make sure that people can stay connected to mental health care while doing their part to slow the spread of COVID-19. And just like the physical distancing actions we're taking to flatten the curve in the coming weeks, the actions we take now to look after our mental health and the well-being of our communities will reap benefits down the road. So today, we're announcing the expansion of virtual mental health supports across British Columbia. We're expanding virtual community counselling programs so you can talk to a trained professional in your community from home in rural and urban British Columbia. We're launching a Foundry Youth Virtual Clinic so young people and their families can connect to integrated, clinically supervised mental health substance use and primary care services. We're increasing access to Bounce Back, which is an evidence, a free evidence-based telephone and online skills building program for people with mild to moderate anxiety or depression. And now, very importantly, anyone can access Bounce Back without a referral from a doctor. This is huge, and this will help so many people in our province. We're increasing access to virtual care for First Nations, Métis, and urban Indigenous people, and we're bolstering online peer support programs and virtual care for immigrants and refugees. And very importantly, we're creating a new online hub and virtual peer support network for frontline community healthcare workers. We need to make sure that we take care of the healthcare heroes who are risking their lives to keep us safe. And we're partnering with organizations like the BC Psychological Association who have stepped up to announce that, and these are the last figures as of yesterday, 200 psychologists across British Columbia have volunteered their services to support frontline healthcare workers. Now more than ever, we have to take care of ourselves and we have to take care of each other. And I cannot tell you how inspired I have been to see people stepping up all across the province in so many different ways to support each other. And I want to appeal to each and every British Columbian today, reach out to your friends and family, check in on your neighbor or your elderly relative. Something as simple as a phone call or a text or a note can have a hugely positive impact. And whatever you're feeling right now, please remember that you're not alone. And please remember that physical distancing does not have to mean social isolation. Social connection is more important than ever before. And please know that professional resources are available if you need them now or down the road. We will get through this together.